This is the line feed reading list for March 2012. And I think last time we were sort of accused of um, um, having a bit of fun, really, <laughs> being a bit giggly. So this time we're going to be very serious. This is very serious. This this um, reading list video. I'm going to start with serious magazine. So it's not particularly serious. It's dazed and confused, and you've probably seen it before and know about it, but. I just thought it looked really good at the moment. I, there's this whole sort of uh, interest in a different sort of graphic design that a lot of emerging designers are doing that a lot of other designers are a bit scared of. And Days looks to me like one of the few magazines that have embraced this sort of um, new style of design, I guess. It's that sort of thing where, you know, like there's annotations up the side and, and strange sort of sort of wonky looking geometric typefaces and it's um uh it's something i've noticed on tumblr a lot um and you know it's nice that after days was a bit wobbly for a while they've they've now suddenly taken charge of the contemporary um sort of look that they should have I'm pointing out a lot of these images because you, you can't actually see in this video but they're super low res like JPEGs, they're really sketchy. Um, yeah, that, that one in particular, so you just can't see in this video, but you, can, you know how JPEGs, when you enlarge them, they get all these funny blocks in them and like all the images are really fuzzy and low res and yeah, that was really interesting because it's often a a problem these days with magazines is that you often get a lot of pictures that aren't really good quality or aren't high res, especially if you work on a magazine that gets a lot of shots from like um, PR companies and stuff like that. You get these really weird, awful low res things. And yeah, it's just nice to see a magazine just putting them straight in and also using it as like part of their aesthetic, which is, is really interesting. I think it's it's quite a good design team at Days at the moment. They've had a few wobbles, but I think they've got a really good team at the moment. Yeah, there's an interesting thing if you want to check out every single issue ever of Days. They've actually been very good and put their whole archive online. So, yeah, something else that's quite radical and that I wish a lot of other magazines were doing. Uh, quite nice that the whole thing is there if you want it. Um, and that's the latest issue, which I think is, is really good. I really like it. Fashion bit was a bit boring, but it's always a bit boring. Uh, this magazine is really lush. This is sort of the other end of the spectrum. Um, and the thing you can't see in this video with this magazine is just how beautiful the paper is. It's just amazing, amazing lush paper that they've used for this. It's called Archivist. And it's... Uh, I don't... It's, it's hard to call it. It's not really a fashion magazine. It's more like a... I like to call it a portfolio, actually, that's what I'm going to call it. You can see it's all very sort of neatly structured, like it's just sections, there's no advertising, you get a really lovely sort of typeset page of copy and then you get a series of images. Uh, and, and yeah, you could, it, it's, it'll almost be nice if, you, if all the sort of sections were loose within the, within a sort of folder or something. Because it's got quite a strange cover, it's got a wraparound cover that you can take off. And if you take that off, there's just blank underneath. So it does feel like each section is its own little publication in a way. Uh, and so sort of rigorously art directed each little section to make sure that they feel like their own little little world really. Um, you can see it's all it's all just really slick. Um, it's a shame actually, again I'm saying, you can't see it in the video, but the typography is really lovely. This was my favourite section, this is a, I think it's a fashion designer and it's sort of like urban camouflage, like you can barely see the people in them. <laughs> Sometimes you can see them like there, that's just spooky, that one. This is a sort of guy camouflaged with his camouflage car and yeah, it was just, it's just nice, con like this each section sort of has a nice contrast and bounces off the next one. I think if anything I wanted more in there, I think. I wanted more stuff. But this is issue one, the premiere issue, so we'll see how it goes. Um, there's a nice shiny bit at the back too. 
Uh, but the archivist is worth checking out. Um, yeah, some lovely typography. Uh, where are we? We're in O'Cumley land. Uh, now I've tried to review O'Cumley before and came to the conclusion that it's just not for me. Not that it's a bad magazine at all, in fact, uh, yeah, I was just pointing at the cover line, which is lovely. It's uh, keep your curiosity sacred. And it, the whole thing is really just investigative and curious and it's like under overturning a heap of sort of rocks on a beach or something. The reason I say it's not for me is because I find it also quite twee and oh, I'm really not this whole sort of trend for twee. It's like a Smith journal that we looked at a little while ago. It's this thing of, oh look, here's a bunch of oldie worldy stuff I've collected. Um, o Company is a bit more quirky than a Smith journal. Uh, like this, for instance, I quite liked this. This is just animals behaving like animals and <laughs> being a bit bonkers. <laughs> you know, everyone likes pictures of animals being bonkers. It's what YouTube's built on, really, isn't it? It's the engine that powers YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm more, this, uh, I look at this and I think, this is really good editorial, this is really interesting, um, but then the design is just so light and so barely touching, and the type, it's just one typeface, and it's not a particularly nice typeface, it's one that they sort of use in the airport signage and things like that, and it's just so almost not there, you know? And I think, in a way, that distracts me more, the fact that it is so bland, you know, and, like, I'm being invited to sort of take interest in all these sort of crazy things by this really limp sort of handshake of a typeface, um, sort of scattered throughout, and sort of fades as well in places, you sort of think, it's, oh, it's sort of apologising for something. But as I said, these magazines are really popular and I can see the appeal of them. I just don't think they appeal to me terribly. And I say these magazines, it is a sort of genre, the sort of twee um, sort of collection of things type magazines. But Okami were the first, I think, or one of the first to... Everyone else is sort of imitating them a bit. Um, oh, and th from that, fr from little indie publication to the, the mother of all fashion titles, it's in British Vogue, which has been, it's been a bit of uh, people moving around at British Vogue, Robin Derrick, who was the art director, or creative director, not sure what his title was, but it was the head honcho creative person at Vogue uh, UK, he moved on recently and in fact helped with the redesign of Harper's Bazaar in the States. Um, I could talk about Robin Derrick more, and I went to a talk that he did once and it was really good. Um, I'm not so hot on his design, but that's why I don't want to get into it because we're talking about Jamie Perlman, who has taken over from Robin Derrick. Uh, and this is the first, uh, I think this year is when she's got to sort of put her mark on it. Uh, just really <laughs> like the Tom Ford ads <laughs> for no particular reason. And they have, they sort of have a bit of a tradition at British Vogue too, of every now and then they'll commission a whole heap of new typefaces uh, to spread around. So this is sort of Jamie's chance to put a mark on it with a whole bunch of new typefaces and give it a, 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 quite a refresh. Uh, having said that, it's not super different. The main thing that I note that you'll notice is uh, she's brought in a lot of sort of elements from really old Vogue magazines. Like, see the words Vogue there? That's from a really old cover from probably what would be b before 1920s. Like, she's referenced loads of really old, ancient Vogue covers and grabbed all their mastheads and redrawn them and all that sort of business. And coupled it with a very, uh, a sort of, it's a, Sort of traditional serif, but it's sort of one that would have been popular in the 60s, with big counter spaces and things like that. Um, I I think it's exciting what she's doing. It's The magazine feels a lot busier, 
what I worry about is that it's sort of stuck in a bit of a time warp. And actually, I, that, that was my first impression. Then when I started reading it more, I sort of thought, no, actually, it's, it's really clever. Because although the, the, the actual editorial design looks like it's trying to be, trying to reference like, you know, a time past, sort of the 50s or the 60s or whatever, the photography, like in this uh, particular article, is really modern, like crazy modern. Really, you, you, you can't really, it's totally not of that age. So, and I like that juxtaposition where like something's really super modern, but then the editorial design's not. So I think that's really interesting. Where, where it gets a bit problematic, I love that word, problematic. Um, <laughs> where it gets problematic is when you're looking at retro looking pieces and all the you just sort of think fashion's meant to be of the moment but it's almost stuck in a bit of a time warp now with these tight faces and these styles I, I have a real problem with these busy busy pages too I think they're far too hectic and far too scrapbooky I, I don't think the American version of Vogue is actually worse and bizarre in the, in the States too are really bad at that sort of scrapbooky, messy, let's busy up the page and, and make it look like that no one. Oh, uh, that's enough about Vogue. Monocle is in here because it's a fifth anniversary edition, so there's a chance to see what the heck's happened in five years. You can see, um, I want to point that out because that's their radio station, they've got a page about it. In the magazine, I've, uh, the radio station I haven't got into mainly because I really like podcasts, and they've sort of rejected that podcast model of like finding the shows you like and just grabbing them to listen to in favour of a more traditional radio thing. Which, but like like with anything with Monocle, they do things that don't seem to work, but it doesn't matter. Like they just do it the Monocle way, and they make enough that it's fine, you know. Um, oh, a good friend of mine, uh, Leslo Kovacs, has done some illustration for this issue too. Really lovely stuff. Hey, it's Rotman, Rotman. I, I just pointed to that because I really want to check out that magazine. If if anyone knows if it's any good, please let me know. Have you noticed too, like, the, the, there's a Com de Garçons campaign running through a lot of the magazines in this video. They're really quite good. They, they're very wacky. They're not all about clothes, you know, directly, as far as I can tell. There's an article about Kevin Rudd in the in the latest issue. It's sort of an Australian special at the same time as being a fifth anniversary special. I just thought that was really bad timing for them since he's just been deposed as, like, potential prime minister. Um, now, this is the... I really like retrospectives, like I'm a sucker for them, I'll, and I love pages full of covers, fantastic. Bit small, couldn't really see what was going on, just looked like a blur of things. The, the, the most interesting thing you can take away from sort of seeing all the monocle covers together like that is that they started off really basic, really pared down, and they've had to sort of put more and more colour into the cover, and more and more sort of activity and um, yeah but if you look at the first monocle covers they were really basic really pared down and most there wasn't a lot of color or anything the shop section is a lot different in this issue something I noticed because I just noticed amazing things like that um, it's yeah it's all different it just feels like a different separate magazine now well I guess it feels more like a catalog it's got little illustrations and everything, it's quite odd. And of course it's on different stock, because they, they use all sorts of different stock. You've got to love sexy librarian fashion shoots, so that, that gets a big tick from me. Any magazine that does a sexy librarian fashion shoot, very good. Bonus points if it's a sexy male librarian fashion shoot. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> I should just judge every magazine based on whether they have um, Sexy librarians in them or not? I think they'd be the only ones in this one. They're a bit rare, aren't they? Uh, 
Oh, this is our magazine that you'll get if you subscribe to Stack. This is what is landing on your doorstep. A great big chunk of a magazine. It's really lovely too. It's called The Ride. Is it The Ride or The Ride Journal? Looks like Ride Journal. And it's it's been out, it's been going for a little while. They've had a massive break and this is they've come back with this sort of bumper sized edition. Uh, and it's pretty much essays about bike riding. A lot of them really quite passionate and very serious and worthy. But um, yeah, I mean, as you would expect from a bike enthusiast magazine. What I love is it's such a simple format. Like you get picture on one side, text on the other, and maybe the occasional sort of photo essay to break it up. And uh, the art director, Andrew Diprose, is actually art director for Wired UK as well. And he does this magazine with his brother. So it's it looks like it's a really fantastic chance to um, just use a lot of these amazing illustrators that um, you might n that you might not be able to sort of use in Wired or like you know limited budgets or something. But uh, this was nice. These are like uh, reprints of uh, illustrations from like 1910 or something, 1940s, 19, what do you say, 1910s? Does that make sense? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm really sniffly, that's not good. Uh, sorry, I'm making sniffly noises. Oh yeah, I just f flick through here and pick some of my favourite illustrations. Oh, I'm not actually that, like reading about bike riding is a bit much for me, but I think you could easily pick this up and just get lost in the in the various illustrations and photo essays. It's just really lush, lush publication. You can see some more um, illustrations in here, uh, and it should be telling you who they're by. But uh, that one's by Richard Hogg, who's an awesome illustrator who also makes uh, really good video games or video games. I sound like such an old man saying that. It's a pretty cool like app games, game apps, something. He makes good ones anyway. Uh, this oh, I wanted to show you this too. This also comes with your Stack subscription this month, and I'll tell you about more about Stack at the end of this video. Uh, uh, Anorak magazine you probably heard of. You probably, what you probably didn't know is they actually produced lots of weird little offshoots and quirky little books. And I actually went to visit uh, editor Kathy in her in her. Um, studio once and was amazed at the amount of sort of offshoots publications that Anorak put together and they're all lovely. There's a whole series of these tiny little postcard sized booklets by different illustrators that you can colour in and do whatever you like with. And you get one of them, one of them out of this sort of huge collection uh, with your stack subscription this month. So that's really, really cool. Um, <coughs> be nice to collect them. I'd quite like a set. <laughs> Um, I, I really like featuring sort of free street press pieces every now and then because uh, it's sort of a, they're sort of the forgotten heroes of the publishing industry really, the, the sort of music street press and stuff like that. And really like you don't get a lot from like Enemy and things like that anymore so you're better off just picking up a free newspaper uh, to find out about what's you know good in music and things like that. Stool Pigeon is awesome, and this is a new one that's produced in Bristol called... What's it called? Is it called Crush or Crash? Crack, even. <laughs> um, I have to say the design, like, I, I really like Loud and Quiet. I think that the design of that is spot on. Um, this one feels like they're still finding their feet. It's a little sparse, um, but it, at the same time, you can see that... Um, if they just get a bit more confidence, you know, they could they could actually be quite strong. I think it's just the, the design's a little in, not so confident at the moment, but it's worth that's one to keep an eye on because I think crack will get better and better. Um, oh gosh, garage! What an odd thing garage is. I, it's fashion and art, and I'm guessing like the fashion pays for the art or something in here. It's quite a weird mashup. Uh, interesting because it's an English magazine, but oh, I'm zooming out. Uh, English magazine, but art directed by Mike Mir or Miri. Oh, I should know how to say that. Um, yeah, but he he's a he works in Germany and he has a studio, 
um, where they make magazine design, where they do editorial design and make furniture and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and he's been producing or doing artwork for, or art direction for loads of magazines lately. But this is the first in, like uh, one outside of Germany that I've noticed. O32C would, is one that you would know of, uh, and Brand Eines as well, uh, especially if you're familiar with German publications. That's him there, apparently. It's like a cartoon of all the contributors. That's Damien Hirst. <laughs> oh, and they've even managed to get um, Patrick de... Oh, I can't say his name either. I'm terrible. I really should work on my pronunciations. Really bad. Um, but you'll see flicking through here, like, uh, see, I think Mike Meir is one of the most cerebral art directors around, like, every publication he does has, it really gets your brain cogs whirring, like, there's a lot of thought gone into sort of throwing, sort of throwing you off a bit in some cases, there's always something of, sort of odd that he sort of, you know, lights up a little part of your brain when you when you read a magazine that he's designed. Um, in this one, there's look, it's it feels really scattershot, and I don't know if that is part of this sort of cerebral approach, whether it's deliberate or it is just really a really random magazine. Um, oh, yeah, this is really bizarre piece of <laughs> um, merchandising, is it? I don't know what you call it. It's an ad for Lee jeans, so they've got an actual pocket. But then they've got these artists limited edition condom packets. But then inside it says it's not it's not an actual condom, you're not allowed to use it. Yeah, this condom is not meant for use. You just keep it. Uh, <laughs> really elaborate. Um quite odd. I'm a bit sad I didn't get the Keith Herring one actually. That would have been better. Um but yeah, I had to show that to you. That's the most elaborate piece of sort of stuff I've seen. And it was an actual piece of denim. It was an actual pocket in there. Really odd. Gay hanky code as a fashion shoot. I think the theme was sort of sex or sexy stuff or sensual sexy stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is, you know, there was this thing in the 70s when gay men called themselves clones or something. I did, there's a vague history of gayness. I'm, I'm not, I'm not an authority, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they had a hanky code and different colours meant different things. So they based the whole, um, a whole fashion shoot on these hankies. And then they had sort of a thing about gay marriage. It's a bit gay. This magazine. <laughs> Maybe it's just the two articles together. I don't know. But they did sort of subvert it with the woman and the hankies, or something. Yeah, it's very odd. But yeah, it's like there's a lot of magazines out there that try and straddle art and fashion. And I, I think they do it because you get you get the big ads when you include fashion in your magazine. And and that's why there's sort of a tension there. But then at the same time, like I was saying, Mike Mears art direction tends to create interesting tensions. So it's hard to tell whether he's, that's been deliberate that you sort of jump from fashion to art to fashion to art to fashion to art or not. Because um, there's little jarring things like the typeface seems to be, each letter seems to be different for weight or slightly different cut of the same typeface. Um, and there's little, little weird little sort of, you know, like rips and tears or little bits of photocopied sort of smudges sort of left in, but not in a really obvious way. <laughs> this, is, this is why I think he's such a good art director, because, yeah, like I said, it just gets your brain cogs wearing when you, when you read to these magazines. Um, garage, every, like the typeface really pulls everything together, otherwise it just feels like a a whole series of different bits of magazines. There's been a lot about Kasum. Uh, so how do I say that? I need to practice my pronunciations before I do these videos, really. But there's a big, ex big exhibition of this woman's work on at the Tate at the moment, and you would have seen 
I think there's a couple of other magazines back there that had articles about her. But there's loads about her in this issue of Garage as well. Um, I thought the ex I went to the exhibition. I thought it was I was a tiny little bit underwhelmed. I thought that, like she did some lovely stuff, but I think it was just presented in too grandiose a manner. Really, it should have been a bit scrappier. Um, but yeah, oh, this was nice. It's just patterns on like some shiny paper. Yeah, changing paper stock again. There's a lot of magazines. That's pretty much a, almost a common thing these days, isn't it? Like magazines swapping paper stock all over the place, going from shiny to to uncoated and all that sort of business. Um, yeah, the fashion again I, I sort of left me cold a bit. I wasn't really into it. Some of it was really lovely. See, this is a nice touch. It's about the sea, so there's a tentacle hanging down the page. But you don't notice it as a tentacle straight away. You sort of flick past it. I just think I think the thing with like this is just that the fashion sometimes works, but not all the time. Uh, and the juxtaposition between fashion and art is, is a little little problematic. <laughs> uh, okay, we're at the end. And I'm going to show you a thing, and I'm not sure what to call it. It's not a magazine, that's for sure. It was one-off publication. Actually, this this is a printed version. So I originally read saw this as a PDF that you could download for free because it didn't have copyright on it or something, probably from Google Books. When I went to Australia last time, uh, Mr. Geddes, who runs uh, Chase and Galley, uh, there happened to be a stack of these in the corner. I was like, oh my god, it's that book! And they they pretty much printed out a whole set of them on the risograph machine. Um, it's, I just really love the layout. And actually, it reminds me of the early days of ID magazine, where it was just really rough and ready and using the typewritten typeface and um, just blocks sort of stuck on the page and dotted around. And at, at one point, when I was working on Graphic Magazine, I sort of was using this as a reference. Uh, um, it, mainly because of sort of, you can tell from the underlines and the headings, and I just really loved how sparse it was, and yet it was really warm, and, and like, there's a lot of, a lot of interesting things they've done with just one colour and minimal sort of typography. Um, and the whole thing's really cool and interesting. <laughs> I never used the word cool, that was a bit weird. It's it's probably not it's probably not cool at all. It's probably quite daggy. Um but it's sort of like hippies and how to make your own houses and furniture and how to sort of just build a house in the middle of nowhere. Here's your here's your eight whatever micro house. Um and it was sort of promoting a sort of lifestyle where people just headed out into the woods and constructed these sort of space age looking buildings out of really, you know, natural materials. Um, they are really space age looking, but then the, the use of the pictures, they're sort of made of, you know, bits of wood and stuff like that. I want a micro house, that's what I want. I want a micro house and I want a micro truck to drive it to and um, yeah, it was designed uh, by Ken Isaacs and someone else. <laughs> See, happy hippies and their micro whatever that they didn't finish building. But that's how to build your own living structures and if you get a chance to check that out, even if it's just a PDF, uh, please do. Um, and we've come to the very end. Uh, all that's left for me to do is to thank Stack as usual for supporting these vids and sending us a copy of uh, uh, the Ride Journal and our little Anorak uh, publication for this issue. Stack is a subscription service where you get a surprise magazine every month. Um, and it's always like a really interesting independent publication. And there's usually something else sort of bonus extra in there as well. Sort of uh, a street magazine or some really quirky little thing. Uh, to find out more go to stackmagazines.com uh, and also, I want to mention an event that's coming up at the end of April called Facing Pages 2012, which is taking place in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And it's um, it's a big independent magazine fest. And they do them like there's a real enthusiasm for these things. Um, 
in uh, that part of the world. So if you, if you happen to be in the Netherlands around April, end of April, I think it's from like the 19th to the 22nd, so it's like a Friday and a weekend or something. Ho I'm hoping that I'll be there, I don't know yet, but um, there'll be some sort of uh, link, hopefully. So find out more, visit, uh, oh, I don't know, I think it's facingpages.org, but I'll put the, the address down. I should go, like, because now it's just like bunnies, and and that means that I've sort of lost it a bit. <laughs> oh, see, you now hands. See, it just doesn't, it gets in, yeah, it's wrong. I'm going to go. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to visit linefeed.me. See ya, bye. Oh yeah, this is just a little personal plug at the end. I'm available. I'm I'm for hire. Uh, I'm looking for a new design role uh, outside of the UK. Um, so if if you need a hand with making mags or promoting mags or it's anything to do with mags really, then drop me a line at michael at okinterrupt.net. That's that's all. That's the end of my plug. See ya.